So today's book is Arthur's First Sleepover, and we're going to use this book to help us think about maybe a memory that we have and writing about that. So Arthur's First Sleepover. If you look at the cover on the front, how do you think the sleepover is gonna go? What are you predicting? I am predicting it's going to be a bit of a disaster. Arthur was getting ready for his first sleepover. It isn't until Saturday, called Mother. Come in and eat your breakfast. Father laughed while he read the paper. Some man in town says he saw a spaceship, he chuckled. Probably the same man who thinks he saw Elvis at the mall, joked Mother. I don't believe in aliens, said Arthur. Well, the National Requirer does, said D.W., and they'll pay a lot of money for a picture of one. The National Requirer, that would be like a newspaper or a magazine. On the way to school, the girls were talking about the spaceship. Arthur wanted to talk about his sleepover. We can have the sleepover in my tent, said Arthur. You wouldn't catch me out in a tent with all these spaceships landing, said Muffy. Bad news, said Buster. My mom thinks I'm too young for a sleepover. He can't come. But you have to, said Arthur. It's my first sleepover and you're my best friend. Why do they call them sleepovers, said Francine. No one ever sleeps. That afternoon, Arthur told his mother about Buster's problem. Well, I'll see what I can do, said Mother. Arthur crossed his fingers while she dialed. Buster's mom did all the talking. Yes, no, of course not, said Mother. Absolutely, good talking with you too. Bye. Mother smiled and nodded her head yes. Hooray, cried Arthur. Does Buster's mom know about the spaceship, asked UW? I saw flashing lights from one today. I think that was the pizza stop sign, said Mother. Saturday morning, Arthur was outside making the tent cozy for the sleepover. His family helped too. I was just thinking, said D.W., how do we know that you're our real parents and not aliens in their bodies? Did you brush your teeth, asked Father. And pick up that mess in your room, young lady, said Mother. Okay, okay, said D.W. They sound real to me, said Arthur. Arthur was looking for his flashlight when Buster and the Brain arrived. It was here a minute ago, said Arthur. I wonder if you'll see any aliens, said D.W. If we do, said the Brain, how will we communicate with them? Forget about communicating, said D.W. Take pictures for the National Requirer. Use my camera. We can split the money. Let's make signs, said Arthur. Good idea, said Buster. But first I have to call my mom. After they finished their signs, they unpacked. I brought a few snacks, said the brain. I brought a rubber snake, said Arthur, to keep DW away. What did you bring, Buster? Just my baseball card, said Buster, and my blankie. Do you really think we will see aliens tonight? No, do you, said Arthur. Highly unlikely, said the brain. There's some of the signs they made. Aliens, welcome. We are your friends. Please do my homework. I think Buster probably made this one. The boys forgot all about aliens. They were too busy telling jokes and trading baseball cards. Pillow fight, screamed Buster. Quiet, said the brain. What's that sound? Footsteps, whispered Buster. And they're getting closer, said Arthur. Oh, oh! Pizza delivery, called an unfamiliar voice. Compliments of the sleepover parents. Everyone laughed. I almost stopped breathing, said Arthur. I almost wet my pants, said Buster. Before they knew it, they heard another voice. Lights out, said Father. It's after nine, bedtime. Already, said Arthur. Thank you for the pizza, sir, said the brain. 
You're welcome, said Father. Good night. Good night, said the boys sweetly. What do you think? Are they really going to sleep right now? I don't think so either. Their faces kind of look like they might be lying. They've got blush. As soon as they heard Father go back in the house, they shot out of their sleeping bags like cannonballs. I heard bedtime, said the brain, but I didn't hear sleep time. Let's tell spooky stories, said Arthur. How about cards, suggested Buster. Just as it was Arthur's turn to go fish, they saw the flashing lights. They dropped their cards. It got very quiet. Aliens, whispered Buster. I don't hear any footsteps, whispered Arthur. Of course not, said the brain. They haven't landed yet. Lights flashed again. They're headed for our tent. Run for your life. No one could find the flaps. Help, screamed Buster. Let me out. The tent collapsed. That didn't stop them from making a run for it. But a large maple tree did. Ouch, said Arthur. I'm calling my mom, said Buster. Look, said the brain. The lights are coming from your house. I think I know this alien, said Arthur. It's from the planet DW. Arthur noticed the things they used to make signs. That gave him an idea. Let's put our tent back up. I think I know a way we can teach a little space creature a lesson. Later, Arthur crept quietly into the house. D.W. was in her room laughing. What's so funny, he asked. What are you doing up here, said D.W. Did you come in because you're scared? Not really, said Arthur. I'm returning your camera. You'll probably see an alien before we will. Doubt it, said D.W. Well, just in case, said Arthur. Sweet dreams. Then, very quietly, he returned to his tent. A minute later, D.W. heard a tap at her window. Aliens! She screamed. She screamed so loud it woke up everyone in the neighborhood. Except everyone except Buster, the brain, and Arthur. When mother and father went out to check, the boys were sleeping like little angels. Of course, after mother and father went back into the house, it was another story. So I'm gonna share with you the story of my first sleepover. And I would love to hear if you have a memory about a sleepover. It doesn't have to be your very first one if you have a better story about one that's not. Or maybe you haven't had a sleepover with friends yet, but you've had a sleepover with your, maybe your cousins or your grandma or your grandpa or somebody that you love. And that could be a story that you tell too. If you haven't ever had a sleepover before, no big deal. Just pick a different memory to tell me about. So I'll tell you about my first sleepover. Memory pocket, my first sleepover. My first sleepover was a disaster. Kind of like Arthur's. It was when I was six for my friend Lauren's birthday. When it was time to go to sleep, I got so nervous that I started crying and wanted to go home. And then all the other girls cried too. And our moms picked us all up. I still feel guilty for ruining the birthday sleepover. So I think it was kind of maybe my fault that all the other girls wanted to go home too. Lauren is such a good friend and she did forgive me, but I did feel bad about on her birthday crying and having everyone else want to go home. Now on this side, this is not something I want you to write because that's just gonna waste your time. I'm gonna make a picture or a checklist of this anyway so you don't have to write it down. But this is our success criteria for memory pocket writing. So we're gonna do a few more practices this week and next week. And then by the end of next week, we'll be finished and experts at writing our memory stories and getting ready to write some different kind of stories instead. So success criteria is just, we've used it before, but what do you need to be successful? So how do you know that you have done everything that you need to do? 
So when it comes to memory pocket writing, one of the success criteria is I included all of the important details. You guys are totally experts at this because you've been practicing it for a few weeks now. So let me just double check mine. I included all the important detail, details, did I? I said who was in this story? Yep, me and my friend Lauren, and I guess some of the other girls. And I said it was when I was six, and what happened? Yeah, I think I have all the important details. As long as it's clear for the person who is reading it to understand, then you have all the important details. And then the another sex crest criteria is I included an interesting detail or a feeling. So that is what makes your writing even better and more interesting to read. So including all the important details is one. And then the other thing is making it a little bit interesting. So adding a second detail or maybe adding a feeling in there, just something to make your story stand out or be a little bit more interesting. So for me, I, my, I included a feeling that I still feel guilty, which is another way for saying that you feel kind of bad. I feel guilty for ruining the birthday sleepover. So those are the two success criteria that are just about memory pocket specifically. And then the other three are ones that you should be thinking of anytime you're doing some writing. And these ones you know all the time. You're probably gonna hear me and say, oh, my muscle car, I know this, I do this already. So did you, I use my words to stretch it, I use my sounds, sorry, to stretch out the words. So we know that we're not gonna be perfect spellers in grade one, that's totally fine. What makes you a good speller is by being able to use your sounds. So did you use your sounds to stretch out the words so that I can read it and somebody else can read it too? Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to get your mom and dad to tell you how to spell everything. Just try it on your own. For example, when I was spelling the word sleepover, first I decided to chunk it like we do when we're um, reading long words like that. And then I sounded out sl E, I know I needed a double E to make the long E sound. Sleep, sleep over, sleep over. And I included all the sounds that I needed to. Second one for that is I spelled my sight words correctly. So think about the words that we had on our word wall or some of the words that you read really easily when you're reading, like and, and to, and it, and was, and the. Those are the kind of words that you shouldn't really need to stretch out anymore. And let's just double check to make sure that we spelled those correctly. And then the last one is I can read my writing back and it makes sense. Because remember, you are the author. This is your writing. And so you should be able to read it and you can decide whether you maybe missed a word or missed a detail or you think, nope, sounds good. I did it all and it all makes sense to me. So those are our five success criteria in total. And like I said, you don't need to write those down. I'm gonna give you a little checklist and then you can just double check your writing to make sure that it meets all the success criteria. You don't need to check mark it or highlight or anything. It's just for you to keep in your brain. And I'll show you this list every time so that the rest of our practice ones, you'll make sure are following all of the success criteria on this list and you will be an absolutely expert memory pocket writer.